everybody, welcome back to another episode of Getting Buzzed. This is actually our first episode of our second season. So we were renewed. Our uh, YouTube didn't cancel us, so that's great. That is uh, phenomenal. I mean, big, <laughs> fat paychecks are coming in now, Big too. ones, yeah, yeah, big, big ones. Netflix money. Uh, so, as always, we're going to be talking about a sales or marketing um, topic. Today we're talking about marketing strategies that are killing your business. Um, but as always, we're drinking something local. And today we're drinking Wild Basin, uh, boozy, sparkling water. So it's kind of a trend right now, I think, that... I hope it's here to stay. Right? It's pretty it's good. It's 2020. It's January. I'm trying to get skinny. <laughs> drinking these 100-calorie drinks. That's my right. move. There you go. Yeah. Way better than a beer, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. For you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so it's by Oscar Blues. Um, it's melon basil is what we're drinking today. So we're pretty fancy right now. I feel fancy. You should. This is a good Monday. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Season two. Big times. Should probably drink one, huh? So, like I mentioned, um, today we're talking about marketing strategies that are killing your business. And I think there are a lot of ways that we could go with this topic. Yeah. Because, um, like, there's there are things that we see every day that come in and we're like, why would you ever do that? Like, why are you thinking about that? Yeah. Um, but we've kind of narrowed it down to a few that we want to talk about. I feel like this could be a day-long episode if we just kept going oh yeah um but kind of the one of the things that we see all the time is you know we'll get a phone call or somebody will reach out to us or we'll just run into somebody and they're like hey so everyone keeps telling me i need to do xyz but like just because you hear that you need to be doing something doesn't really mean that you should be you need to do it right? right and so i think social is the biggest Biggest one that you, people fall into, totally. like, oh, I have to be on social. I have to be, you know, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and LinkedIn, like all of these different platforms. But people aren't really thinking through, like, okay, does my business need to be there though? Well, and I think some of them, <laughs> right? You got to show up on Google. You sure. Probably makes sense to have a LinkedIn, unless it's like, I don't know, for babies. Uh, it definitely makes sense to have a Facebook, I think, for almost every business. But, like, Twitter, does your business need it? Some of them do. Some of them really don't. Some right. of them, you're not going to reach your target demographic. You're not going to reach any audience. You're going to be putting all this work into it. You're going to get 13 mm -hmm. followers, and it's not going to move your business forward, and it's just a waste right. of time. Right, for sure. And I, I think that, like, depending on what industry you're in, right, and who your target customer is, mm -hmm. like, Another issue is like I, people telling you, oh, you need to be on all of them. You need to be on every yeah. network. Like, why are you That's spending really it? Like, funny. if you're a, a professional services business, you don't need an Instagram. Right. You don't need a Snapchat. I'm not going to Instagram to find my lawyer. Or, right. Yeah. These aren't, that's not a thing. Right. And Ooh, what so, pretty pictures of this lawyer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those things that, like, I think people aren't thinking through some of these things as to, like, why. Yeah. Like you hear it all the time. Oh, you got to be on social. You got to be, and it, it's true outside of social too. Like sure. you need to be blogging. Oh, you need to, um, you need to be creating new content for your website. You need a new website. Right. Um, like all these different things that may be true. Sure. But they aren't necessary. It's not like some overarching, like everyone needs this. I mean, just like any business, there is no one size fits all for every single business and you can't compare yourself to this business if that's not your industry yep. if they're not in your you know there's just so many th different factors that you know make it unique towards you and that's why you have to hammer out the strategy that's going to work for you right well and i think we're all a little bit like our industry is kind of responsible for it right oh like, I'm sure yeah. talking about about oh you need to have this you need to have this and it, it just becomes this thing that Oh, I've heard it so many times, so it must be true. Right. And and there are consultants and agencies and marketing managers and things like that out there that just speak in absolutes. Right. That, oh, you have to have this. You can't not have it. Right. And I, I think that that's causing issues for some businesses. that they, they don't really understand, like, hey, maybe that's not right for me. Like, sure. that's great that you're having so much success, but maybe it's not going to work for me. Yeah. And even digital, like it can be as broad as like digital marketing. Oh, you have to be marketing on the internet, right? Like every, it's 2020, which right. is weird to say, but it's 2020. Like you have to be marketing on the internet. There are businesses that don't need it. Right. 
that totally. are thriving off of traditional, you know, website or I mean, uh, radio or television commercials, billboards, direct mail, like those marketing avenues are still around for a reason. Totally. And so I think it's it's crazy to think that there's a like one size fits all. Like you have to do X Y Z. Yeah. Well, and one thing you always say is you know we don't build the field of dreams here you know if you build it they're not gonna come and so even if you look at your competition down the street or whatever it is if they've got a great facebook page and they've got ten thousand followers and they're getting you know a hundred plus likes on all their posts they're probably doing more with that Facebook. it's not just all right well if i build it then they're gonna go to me as well and they're gonna come and they're gonna engage with us like those people are putting in endless hours coming up with great content figuring out how to get that kind of engagement, get that following. And so it's not just, all right, well, they've got a Facebook, so I need a Facebook. Right, There's it's so just much gonna more work that goes way. into it. And if you don't have the time or the resources, you don't have a partner agent, whatever it is, yep. if you're not going to be able to put in the same effort, those people are don't expect the same results. Right. Well, I think that kind of comes to the next point, that social media is so much different than it was a year ago yeah. or five years ago. And it's, it really is becoming, like, they, we've heard it forever, right? That it's becoming a pay-to-play. And it really kind of is. Yeah. Like, we've gotten to the point that it is. Right. Um, and so if you're if you're thinking that, oh, I'm going to post a few times a week, and we're just going to be flooded with business from it, that's a really poor strategy. Sure. You know, in 2014, maybe that would have worked. Um but today, there's just so many people on social. There's so much noise that you just can't. Right. Like, you can't think that, oh, I'm going to make a few posts here and there. Right. And it's going to work. Yeah. Like, making a few posts here and there, great. Do that. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't be posting because you absolutely should be. Have to be. But thinking that just making a few posts is going to really move the needle. Right. You're, you're going to be. It's not going to start your snowball effect that you need it to. Absolutely not. Um, and so when it comes to advertising, like being strategic about that too, it can't just be, I'm going to throw money at Facebook, mm-hmm. um, or whatever. I mean, they're, they're advertising platforms basically on all social Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, like all of them have some form of advertising. Right. And so, you know, I think it's, if you're going to make social media priority like you have to actually make it a priority and you you have to go in you have to be willing to spend a little money Mm -hmm. um and i think just from a general perspective like a lot of social media advertising still underpriced like people don't want to pay for it because oh social's already always been free right but like if you think about your actual return on investment social social advertising is actually a good way to go yeah for a lot of businesses not every business (laughs) Um, so yeah, I think that's that's something that you have to consider if you're if social is part of your 2020 strategy, you have to consider what are we going to spend on it. Yeah. It can't just be man hours. It can't just be content creation. Right. Like it's got to actually be how do we expand our reach, and that's going to be through advertising. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that I always hear is people come to me and they say like, oh, we we want to boost our posts on Facebook, or we want to do this and that, and. It also can't just be that either. It right. can't just be like you still have to come up with the great content, the stuff that people actually want. Right. It's not just like, oh, we're going to boost it. And well, and, and a strategy, right? It can't right. just be like, oh, every once in a while we just like randomly boost a post. We come out with a post once a month. <laughs> we boost it. Right. That's not a and thing. And it reaches three million people. <laughs> um, but but kind of getting away from the social thing, you mentioned this briefly, so I want to mention it briefly, is the blog piece. I think... A lot of businesses are thinking, we don't need a blog, or uh, people aren't consuming content the way they did three, five years ago. They're not going to read a 1,500-word blog post or anything like that, so we want to do a short 300-word blog post, which uh, in itself is a bad strategy, and we can kind of get into that. But also, just having a blog to have a blog because, again, the business down the street has a blog, and you can see it's getting good likes, and they're posting that on their social if it's, again, not good content, if you're just posting, hey, look at this award that we won this month and look at our team outing last month, like nobody's coming to your blog then. Nobody's right. inter- I'm not going to my favorite brand's blog to read all of their team outings and how cool they are and these charity events. And like those things are great, 
but you got to mix in content that's actually going to move the needle as well. Yeah. People want to work with brands that they like, but they also want to work with brands that are top of the line, that are giving them information, that are right. you know feeding the right type of content. Well, I think there's a few different points there. Um, like from a blog perspective, like if blogs have kind of had this like peaks and valleys kind of thing, right? Where it's been, oh, you have to have a blog. All oh, blogs are stupid. Right. Oh, you have to get one. Like my cousin's doing it. Right. Uh, we don't need this. It's not working. Yeah. Right. And like, it, I think it's going to just continue doing that because blogging is not a, it's not a light switch, right? You don't, you don't flip that light switch and all of a sudden, oh my God, we got a million people reading this blog post. Right. Um, it takes time and people aren't patient. Yeah. And so I think that really kind of figuring out, do I need a blog? And if so, how frequently do I need to be posting? What do I need to be posting about? Um, cause you're right. Like just because it is working for the business down the street doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. Um, and from the kind of content perspective, we get, we get the call all the time of like, oh, we want to be brief, right? We want to have everything super clean. We don't want many words. Like, let's let's cut it all back, yeah. right? Let's let's have basically no content. Right. Um, which in itself is a poor strategy. Like, you can't... Terrible. <laughs> like, it, the, the focus of your website is to educate. Right. Like, the people that are coming to your website, you're educating them on what you do, how you do it, what you sell, all of those things. And if you're trying to do that in as few words as possible, right. one, it's a bad user experience. Like you're not giving the consumer what they're looking for. The like they're left they with need. questions. They're yeah. getting frustrated. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's a bad user experience. And if somebody has a bad user experience on your website today, Probably they go back and do another search. You, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I've done it. We've all done it. Like XYZ company competitors. Like, we don't know who else works in your, your industry, but we're going to find them. Yeah. Because you didn't give us the answer we were looking for. And again, it's 2020, and it is super easy to find anyone right. else. Absolutely. And then, like, from the other side, like, that's a terrible SEO strategy. Yeah. Like, having no content gives Google nothing to index. Right. And so if you're like, hey, we only want to have 100-word blog posts, or we want to have 50 words per page. 100-word pages, yeah. Right. It doesn't it doesn't work. Right. Like you're not going to get indexed. Totally. And with what we've seen with our clients and there've been a bunch of studies done, go Google it. Um, longer content actually performs better. So we have a lot of clients that are, or prospects or whatever that come to us and they're like, it just, it's so heavy. Like there's so much content there. Like there are ways around that. Like you can be strategic about how you present it, but you have to have that content. Right. That's how you establish authority. Yeah. And so the we want to have as little content as possible and we want just pretty pictures like that's got to that's got to go away. Yeah. That's got to die off in 2019. Leave that behind. Yeah. I I do want to mention that doesn't mean keyword stuffing by any means. No, no, no. We certainly <laughs> do not want you to have, you know, a thousand words on each page or on each blog post or anything like that. That just says like the city you're in and the services you provide or the product you provide 54 times or anything like that. Right. Like it still has to be good content. Like you said, there's ways around it, but it doesn't mean just like throwing all these words on a page <laughs> because you want Google to index. No, you. it's, it's gotta be there really the way I would think about it. If I was a small business is there isn't necessarily a maximum and there shouldn't necessarily be a minimum. Like there kind of is, we always recommend at least 500 words per page. Right. So that's a blog post, that's a website page, that's whatever. Mm -hmm. Google's minimum is 300. So really that should be the bottom. Right. But anywhere in between 300 and let's say 5,000 words, like is fair game. And so you, you shouldn't be just trying to fill up space. Right. It should just be, okay, how much content do I need on this page in order to get the information across mm -hmm. and to make my point and to educate my consumers because if you're if you're just focused on word count like you're going to make a mistake you're either not going to give enough information you're going to give too much information whatever yeah so what how much content do you actually need is the point here right and so then that kind of comes into another another area that you know, we've all heard of, there's all these different avenues, right? 
there's from digital there's you know blogging and website and even apps and website copy and social and email like there's all these different avenues but then you're like that's not even considering like traditional um so getting into billboards and tv commercials radio commercials direct mail all of those things like those are still viable for a lot of industries yeah and so thinking about what does that mix look like and it can't it can't just be we're going to do all of it a right. spray and pray we'll figure out what works right right and so many businesses get into that like just throw money at it and we'll see what sticks right and if like that doesn't work we'll <laughs> change it up in six months or a year or whatever. right and it, it just doesn't work like you've got to have some semblance of a strategy sure it, it, it cannot just be we're going to try it all we market to everyone through everything right yeah, <laughs> yeah if, you know i think if you're marketing to everyone you're marketing to no one totally you know it, it just can't be that way yeah and um, so, I mean, really thinking through, we, our last episode was about creating a marketing strategy. Like, yeah. What are you going to focus on? And you're, you can adjust, right? Like you should adjust. It will adjust. Yeah. yeah you've if got, you're not, then you're falling behind. Right. You've got to go through and, and figure out what's working, what's not working, all of those things. Um, but having something to start with, like, don't just throw things against the wall and see what sticks. Right. Um, but at the same time, like our next point is give things time to develop, right? right? Especially if you're thinking like an inbound marketing strategy, like things aren't just going to happen. It doesn't just magically, uh, all of a sudden you're flooded with leads and customers. Right. You've got to give things time to develop. So if you're, okay, we're going to dive into this blogging thing and you blog for two months and, oh, we don't, it's not drawing in a ton of website traffic or leads or customers. You can't just be, okay, kill it. Right. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think... If you create a Instagram, people aren't, you know, it's highly unlikely unless you're tied to or backed by a giant brand that you're going to get 10,000 followers day one or 10,000 likes on that first right. post. If you build a blog, it's not realistic to think, right. okay, well, 500 people didn't come to it day one, so I'm done with it. Right. I remember seeing... Um, I don't know if it was like early in 2019 or something like that, but LeBron James' son created an Instagram. And oh. like everyone went crazy because he had like a million followers in like eight minutes or right. something like that. Like you're not Bronny James. Right. Like You weren't tied to the best basketball player on right. the planet it, at that point. It, that's yeah. not how it works. Right. Um, that's not how it works for the rest of the world. Like unless you've got some celebrity status, right? it's not going to work that way. It's going to take time. Mm -hmm. So being willing to... Take a step back and realize that, okay, this is going to have to develop over time. I've got to stay committed to it, things right. like that. And that doesn't mean, hey, you're going to do this for five years and just continue doing something that's not working. Right. It's pay attention to growth, right? If you're, if you're starting blogging today, like it's not going to take off right away. Yeah. If you're starting SEO today, it's not going to take off right away. But what you want to see is growth month over month. Well, I think look at the data and analytics and see like, oh, we saw a huge surge of engagement or yep. following on this. Oh, it's because we put out this type of post. This is what people are liking. This is what they're engaging with. Continue to do that. Okay, people exactly. stopped following. People didn't like these ones. Stop doing these ones. If you follow the data and analytics, that's what's going to get you to the growth you're looking yep. for. That could help you know guide your posts or guide how often your post, whatever it is. And that's what's going to organically grow your brand. And then you mix in some of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and all of that combined is that strategy that'll help get you where you're going. Right. Yeah, and like, I think kind of the final thing that we had, I, I can't believe we're still talking about this, um, but it's 2020 and apparently people are still building and in love with one-page websites. Which is, as some, as the sales guy here who is looking at websites day in and day out. It's unbelievable how many people I reach out to. <laughs> and it's like, hey, are you guys looking for a new website? You could probably use a refresh. And it's like, oh, we're pretty happy with ours. And it's like, well, if you knew what that website was not <laughs> doing for you, I think it would be worth a conversation. But let me know if you want to talk. Right. It's like it became a really big trend. It was super hot I, a few years ago. And um, they were quick and easy and... Yeah, but it, I think people were like, oh, it's simple. Mm -hmm. Like, everything's on that one page. Clean, yeah. yeah. 
The problem with it is you're only giving Google one page to index. Right. And you can't rank on one page for all the keywords that you want to rank for. Right. And so, like, literally, like, there's there are studies, again, the more pages you have, the more successful your website is from an SEO standpoint. Right. And so having one page does not give you the ability to rank. Mm -hmm. Like, you're just, you're essentially trying to run a, a race and then cutting your legs off. Right. Like, that's not, it, it's not going to work. Yeah. Well, I think beyond giving Google everything that it needs to index you properly and uh, give you all your keywords and all that stuff, it's really not that clean and simple for the user either. Like, if I go to a site that's one page, I'm like, wow, these people don't know what they're doing. This isn't answering all the questions I've got. Like, how hard is it to put up a menu bar so I can just right. go to the right pages? Well, right. And then, like, you're trying to condense all your information again. Right. Because you're like, okay, for about us, like, we want to keep it to a paragraph. And, yeah. you know, because you don't want this page to be gigantic. Right. And so, it, like, there's so many issues with it. And, I, like, I thought they had died off. And well, it's a thing again. I'm and not going to scroll down 36 times to right. try to find the information that you want me to find because right. it's on one page. Right. And it just it creates more friction than it eliminates. It's too simplistic for Google, and it's too simplistic for me. Right. And Google's much more advanced than I am. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, yeah, so and I think kind of the ways to think about this and all of these things are who are you selling to, what information can you give them, and I, I think that it's, I guess, another one that we didn't really talk about is trying to hide your secrets, right? Right. Like trying to hide your pricing or how you do business or what you do. That's not good for anyone. Right. And consumers aren't putting up with it anymore. Right. Yeah, I mean, we I invest in way too many softwares. Like it, it's, <laughs> I have a software addiction. I wasn't going to say it. And like I'll find, I'll find something. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Sign up. Um, but my struggle is if I find something that's cool and I go to their website and they don't have pricing, yeah, I'm out. Totally. Like, this is stupid. You shouldn't make me jump through hoops to find basic information. I don't want to request a demo and go through all of this right. if realistically it's too expensive for us. Right. Or like, show me the pricing and if all things match up, I'll sign up for right. a demo. Like, I, we have, we have people that ask us all the time, like, oh, should you put that on there? Like, what if your competitors see it? You don't think they already know what you charge? Right. I, I guarantee every one of my competitors, if you're watching, you know what I charge. Right. Like, that, that's just how it works. Like, it's not hard to find out. Yeah. And they're going to figure this stuff out anyway. So all you're hurting is yourself. Totally. And so it, it all comes back to who are you selling to, what are they trying to find, and educate them. Right. And if you do, the, do those things, you'll be successful. Yeah. And that maybe that means that you're not on social because hey your your clientele base is retirees that aren't spending their time there. Yeah. You know? Um it, it's just it's thinking through what do I need to do in order to reach those people? Yeah. And how do I reach them? Yeah. Cool. And so like the last part of our section is uh how's the buzz? And so That's my favorite part. Right. Uh Wild Basin we uh, there's a Denver Hug group, HubSpot user group that we go to every that quarter. Weird if people don't know what that means. Right. Yeah. We we all just stand around and give each other hugs. It's fine. Um, but it's a HubSpot user group, and uh, you know there's a presentation, and it's all about kind of learning how to use HubSpot the best. And the Denver one is hosted at Oscar Blues, mm -hmm. and I feel like I was always getting a beer every time, and then I think Yvonne got one of these one time. And right. Like, Ooh. Yep. I, I'll, I'll do that. So I'm I'm about them like they're they're not heavy like it's it's something you can just drink and slam not, yeah absolutely Is that what you were shotgun say? yeah okay. yeah <laughs> no I uh, so Oscar Blues is already my favorite brewery I just I love Dale's Pale Ale mm -hmm. uh, if you're watching this Oscar or Blues please feel free to sponsor <laughs> me or send me some merch or whatever but um, so I've always loved Wild Bays and I kind of got on that White Claw kick if I can okay. say that as an okay. almost 30 year old man yeah but I don't know that that's acceptable but... I, I feel like these are like less sugary less syrupy mm -hmm. than any of the other seltzers which I absolutely love so I, I'm right. a big fan of them keep going Oscar and Blue <laughs> yeah I, I like it too it's it's it feels summery though yeah like it feels a little weird drinking this when it's like cold outside well maybe 
I'll, I'll drink it year round. Sure. So feel free to send me this. <laughs> Well, thanks for tuning in. Um, Again, we'll have a a new episode every two weeks. Uh, Be sure to like and subscribe to our page, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.